What's up everybody? Jamie here from Sharon at Sea. Hey, you know, I'm known to enjoy an adult beverage when I go on a cruise. I'm not claiming to be an expert, but I think I know a thing or two. So today I'm going to share with you 15 things you need to know before you drink on your next cruise. All right, hey, before we get started, real quick, if you enjoy cruising content on YouTube, we'd love for you to consider subscribing to the channel, click on the notification bell so you're always aware of new content, and make sure you check out our Monday night live streams with myself and Sharon. We have a lot of fun, and we'd love to see you there. All right, now let's talk a little bit about what you need to know before you drink on your next cruise. All right, the first thing I need to tell you is beware of drinking on embarkation day. Now here's what I mean by that. It's been months that you've been planning on this cruise. You are so excited. The excitement is bubbling over. You cannot wait to get onto that ship, uh, dive into the food, the drinks, and have an amazing time. You get up early embarkation day, maybe you skip breakfast, you get to the cruise terminal, you're waiting there, you finally get on board of the ship, and the first thing you see is someone asking you what you'd like to drink. So you immediately order that first a uh, fun drink that you've been waiting to have all week long. You're so excited you chug that drink back and you order the next one, then you order the next one, then you order the next one, then the next thing you know you're passing out during muster drill. Make sure that you go easy on embarkation day. That will set the stage for the rest of the cruise and you do not want the disappointment of being so excited for embarkation day only to find out the next morning that you passed out early, missed everything, and now you have to hope that someone has photos or videos so you can relive the moments that you missed. So take it easy on embarkation day in particular. Don't ruin what should be the most exciting part of your cruise. All right, number two, make sure that you are eating and hydrating properly. All right, there's a lot going on on the cruise any given day, whether you're off the ship, whether you're on the ship, and it's very easy to get caught up with having a few drinks and forgetting to eat and not hydrating. So here's a few tips. Make sure whenever you go to the bar or every other time you go to the bar or order a drink, order a bottle of water and drink that with it as well. Make sure that you don't skip a meal or have what we like to call a liquid lunch while you're on the cruise. Eat a little something that might soak up some alcohol. If you're planning on doing a little day drinking, don't have a salad for lunch. You better go have a burger or something greasy like that that'll give you a nice coating in your stomach. Because what you'll find is you're just going to lose track of time and have drink after drink on the Lido deck while there's a party going on uh, at night in the dance club or whatever the case is. And if you're not eating and hydrating properly, you're going to be in a world of hurt. One thing that we do here at Charon at Sea, we will pack a little thing of Pedialyte. Now throwing back a little Pedialyte the night of drinking or even the next morning if need be is a surefire way to help get rehydrated and feeling better and making sure that you have a great cruise experience. All right, next is pace yourself when you're drinking. Okay, know how much you can handle and don't overdo it. And I'll tell you why, because the most expensive hangover you can ever have is the hangover that you have on the cruise ship. You've paid a lot of money to be on that cruise ship. And the last thing you wanna do is wake up on what should be an amazing sea day or a huge port day where you have lots of plans and an excursion lined up and you don't wanna wake up feeling like crap, to be honest with you. You'll have a headache, a stomach ache, you'll be woozy, nauseous, not feeling well, and that can definitely ruin an entire day. So you need to make sure that you pace yourself so that you don't ruin the next day of cruising because you may only have seven days to enjoy and a bad hangover can take one day out of that cruise, turn it into a six day cruise, and it can really affect your experience and the people that you're cruising with. So pacing yourself is extremely important. Make sure that you're doing that. Okay, now here's a little something different, but very important as well. Tipping on the cruise ship. You know, when you buy your drinks, you're gonna have probably an 18% gratuity added in. Whether or not you have a drink package, or you're just buying them a la carte, as we call it. But there's nothing wrong with throwing a little extra tip at your bartender. If you have a favorite place you hang out, a bar you really enjoy, someone that goes above and beyond, just has some great interaction with you, either write in a tip, or better yet, throw a buck or two on the bar for them. When you write in your tip, chances are it'll get shared with the team. If you throw them a buck or two, then they might have the chance to keep it directly for themselves if that's how you mean your tip to be kept. So don't be afraid to leave a little extra tip. Bring a few singles or a couple of fives with you out at night. That way when someone recognizes you the next time you come to the bar, maybe you get a little better service, maybe you get a little heavier pour in your drink, 
And if nothing else, maybe when there's a line of people, they recognize you and call you up to the bar first and save you five to 10 minutes of waiting for a drink. Throw a little tip out there. Don't be afraid. The bartenders will appreciate it and you'll feel good about it. All right, another thing. I know when you're on that cruise, you are tempted to get that drink that just looks beautiful. It's fluffy, it's frothy. It might have whipped cream and a cherry on top. It'll have umbrellas and pineapples hanging out of it. Those drinks are a lot of fun and they look great but we call them foo-foo drinks. They can be loaded up with sugars and things like that and a lot of things that just aren't alcohol and those things can contribute to possibly not feeling well the next day. Now I'm not saying don't enjoy a pina colada or a Miami Vice or whatever other drink you want, but try to mix it up a little. Don't just drink those all day long. Another thing is you'll lose track of how much alcohol you're really drinking. And you may not even know how much alcohol is in that drink. Is it one shot, two shots, three shots? So I'm going to recommend steer clear of the foo-foo drinks, the sugary drinks, and stick with something that you know and that you're familiar with. It'll save you a little heartburn and probably save you a little bit of a headache as well. All right, here's a little tip for you from me. Drinking is not cheap when you go on the cruise. The price you pay for the drinks is equal to what you might pay at a nicer nice club or bar in your area. You're looking at $6, $7 a beer, eight, nine, 10 bucks for a mixed drink and they go up from there. But there will be different ways that you can save a little money while you're drinking. Number one, take advantage of bottle service if the ship offers it. Pre-purchase a bottle to be delivered to your room. The bottles will be two to three times the cost of what you'll pay in the liquor store, but in the long run, you will save a lot of money over buying drinks at the bar. So if you're into bourbon, scotch, whiskey, things like that, pre-purchase that bottle and pour yourself a drink in the cabin you'll save a chunk of money that way. Another thing you can do is purchase a drink package on board. You can even purchase it before you get on the ship and maybe save a few dollars. There are many different types of drink packages. The different cruise lines have them. Some have different tiers. Some are a one price for all the drinks you can handle. So look into what the cruise line offers. But if you like to drink, usually drinking six to seven drinks a day on average will break even quite easily on a drink package that you'll purchase. One little thing to keep in mind is normally anyone who's a 21 or over adult in the cabin needs to purchase it because the cruise ships don't want you sharing that drink package with someone else, so just keep that in mind. If you're a beer drinker, buy beers by the bucket. Chances are on the Lido deck or around the ship, if you buy a beer, they'll offer them in a bucket with some ice, buy four at a time, you'll usually save a couple bucks on that deal. Another thing you can do is sign up for different alcohol taste testings on the ship or even like a mixology class. One thing I did on the Carnival Horizon was I went to a scotch uh, class where I learned all about scotch and making scotch and we taste tested a lot of scotch as well. So for a couple bucks I had an amazing experience on the ship and enjoyed a lot of tasty scotch and uh, you can ask Sharon if you see her. I was feeling pretty good when I got back from that class. So check out mixology classes on your cruise ship. And one last thing is quite often cruise ships will offer happy hours. It's not like they're heavily promoted, but if you ask around, ask at the bar, ask at customer service desk if you want, but you may find those, uh, for instance, on embarkation day, I've heard of them offering two for one drinks or buy one, get one half off at casino bars and different things like that. So look into those, ask questions of your bartenders or the people on the ship, uh, ask them about where the happy hour is, when the happy hour is, and that's a great way to enjoy a few drinks and save some money too. All right, another important thing that you need to know is make sure that you ask for the good stuff. Now, there are some drinkers that are extremely specific on what they want to drink, and they'll look for it when they get on the cruise ship. But for a lot of us, you may just order, let's say, a margarita. And if you do, they're gonna give you the least expensive alcohol that they have. May not taste as good, might make you a little more prone to not feeling great the next morning or something like that. So if you have a favorite type of alcohol, or you just wanna have the best drink possible, ask for the good stuff. I mean, if you order a vodka martini, let them know if you want Grey Goose or they're gonna put whatever they have behind the bar in there. When you get that margarita, tell them that you want the Patron and not just whatever the local brand is. Now, if you're buying drinks one by one, you might pay a little bit more for that, you might not, it just depends. But particularly if you have a drink package, make sure that you are asking for the best alcohol possible with every drink that you get. If you get a Long Island iced tea, be specific. Tell them that you want all the premium brands in there. That way you can get the best drinking experience possible and the most bang for your buck. 
Now one thing that Sharon and I learned recently is make sure that you try something new. All right, now we've been on Carnival a few times. We've had some really good experiences with that cruise line. And recently we've discovered the Alchemy Bar. It's a little bit more of a martini bar but they have some really neat and interesting drinks that they make there. And we've been able to enjoy some different things that we usually would never have tried. There was a time we were strictly beer and margaritas, but we expanded a little bit, learned a little bit more about good alcohol, and we found some really tasty drinks that we enjoy now when we go out cruising. So don't be afraid to try something new. Chances are, if you try it and you don't like it, they'll replace it and get you another one. Don't be afraid to say, hey, I didn't care for that. Let them know that you want to try it. And I'm pretty sure the bartender will be open to getting you hooked up with a new drink if you don't like the original. Now, this one might sound a little weird, but it's definitely something you need to consider when you're drinking on a cruise ship. Don't forget your sunscreen. Okay, you don't want to get up in the morning, have a little something to eat, get into a Bloody Mary or Mimosa, lay out on the Lido deck. Next thing you know, it's three or four drinks later, it's two in the afternoon, and you look like a well-boiled lobster out there. There's nothing worse than being hungover and sunburnt at the same time. A bad case of sunburn can literally ruin your cruise for multiple days. And the worst thing that you can do is to drink too much, forget your sunscreen, and get burnt to a crisp. So make sure before you leave the cabin, even if it's a sea day, load up on that sunscreen and don't get caught drinking without sunscreen. Friends don't let friends drink without sunscreen. Words to live by. Now here's one if you're a wine drinker. Okay, a lot of people like to go to dinner and get a glass of wine, and that's all fine, but if you like to do that a few nights in a row, don't buy a glass, buy the bottle. Number one, it's gonna be cheaper, and number two, if you're not gonna drink the whole bottle that night, that's okay, even if you're just one person at the table that likes to drink the wine. They will hold the wine. Chances are the uh, maitre d' or your server will keep the wine there for you. Worst case scenario, you'll be allowed to take it back to your cabin. You know, they treat wine a little different than like buying liquor at the duty-free store. So if you buy a bottle of wine at dinner, you'll be able to take that with you again or leave it there, and that way you can enjoy a drink, a, a glass of wine out of that same bottle each night. And you'll save a couple of bucks in the process. Now I did mention buying liquor on board. Here's something that you may not know. You know, every time that you buy liquor or on board, or if you bring liquor on board from a port, the cruise ship's going to look to hold on to that and give it back to you the last night of the cruise. They do have rules about bringing alcohol on board. But if you are into drinking and you want to throw a few back on the last night of the cruise, that is a great time later in the evening to go to the duty-free shop on board and purchase alcohol. In most cases, they will then let you take the alcohol with you as opposed to keeping it for an hour and making you come back and pick it up later. And if they let you take that alcohol with you, you'll be able to start mixing up some cocktails relatively cheap, and you can save a lot of money if you enjoy drinking on the last night of the cruise. So buy your duty-free alcohol on the last night. Chances are you take the bottle with you. You start drinking it right there and then, and then you take whatever's left off the ship the next day. Now, speaking of your own drinks or bringing your own drinks, in most cases, you can bring some alcohol on board the ship. Chances are it's not going to be liquor, but if you like wine, you can bring usually one bottle per person on in your carry-on onto the cruise ship. Most cruise lines will let you do that. Definitely look into it before you do it. Research whichever cruise line you're on. But in most cases, each person in the cabin who's of age can bring a bottle of wine with them on the cruise ship. And there you can enjoy a little bit of wine with dinner or something like that. You can have exactly what brand you like at exactly the price point that you like. It's a great way to save a little money and enjoy a little bit of wine with your dinner. I know here's another little thing to think about. I know we mentioned that the uh, alcohol on board the ship can be a little expensive. Well, when you get off the ship and you're in port, Make sure that you look for excursions to book that include alcohol. If you're doing some sightseeing, if you're going on a boat ride, if you're doing anything like that, look for excursions that are all inclusive. Maybe a resort for the day. So you can spend the day eating and drinking. Another thing to think about in this day and age is make sure the alcohol that you drink when you're in a port, particularly a Caribbean or Mexican port, I'd recommend looking for brands you're familiar with. All right, there's a lot of stuff in the news these days about drinking potentially tainted alcohol. Usually that's gonna be local product. So if you stick with name brands that are shipped down to the areas that you're drinking in, it's gonna be your safest bet. But again, make sure when you book an excursion, if it's one that you're gonna enjoy a few drinks on, look for one where the drinks are included. 
I know when Sharon and I do that, I'm definitely getting both our money's worth. Now here's something that's crucial when you're gonna be drinking on the cruise ship. Make sure that you gamble before you drink. Now I've seen it, I've actually been a part of it. You get in there, you're gambling, you're having a great time, maybe you're at the roulette table, maybe you're at the crafts table, you're having a blast with other people, next thing you know, your stack of chips is gone, but you still have a little bit of a drink left. Well, you don't wanna leave the table, so what do you do? You throw down your, your, your ship card, your sail and sign card, your sea pass, whatever it's called on the cruise line that you're on, and you tell them to take another 100 out on the account. Well, next thing you know, You've had a few drinks, you've done that three or four times, then you have to go back to your cabin, face your wife, and explain to her exactly what happened after you had a few too many drinks in the casino. Trust me, I know what that's like and it's not a feeling you wanna go through. So try to do your gambling before you do your drinking. You'll thank me for it later. And finally, number f I think this is 15. I think this is the 15th thing that I've mentioned. And I'll tell you what, this might be the most important thing of all. Now, this is going to go against everything that our moms always told us as we were growing up. Mom always said, don't talk to strangers. Don't talk to people that you don't know. Well, I'm here to tell you, when you belly up to a bar on a cruise ship and the person next to you says, hey, how you doing? Turn back to them. Say, I'm doing great. How are you doing? My name is Jamie. Glad to meet you and engage them in a conversation. I'll tell you what, one of the best places to make a new friend is gonna be on a cruise ship. I mean, you already know that you have one major thing in common, right? You like cruising. Because I'll tell you what, you could go back home, line up 15 of your friends, and chances are not even half of them are interested or have gone on a cruise. But right there, you have potentially a brand new friend you could chat with and talk to not only for the duration of that cruise, but who knows, you may make a relationship going forward. I know Sharon and I have been lucky to meet a lot of great people and create some great relationships with folks just from going on cruising, and you can do it too. So make sure when you go to the bar on the cruise ship, don't be afraid to talk to strangers. It could be the most fun that you have on that cruise. All right guys, so that's it. That's 15 things that I need you to know before you go drinking on your next cruise. Hopefully a few of those little tips will make sure that you have a great experience if you plan on throwing back a few adult beverages on your next cruise. Those are things that I've learned over time. A few of them I've learned the hard way, I'm here to tell you. And I just want to share some of those things with you guys today. Now again, before you check out of the video, we'd love for you to hit the subscribe button. Make sure you turn on notifications so you always know when we have new content. If you're into cruising, cruise reviews, cruise vlogs, or anything like that, we'd love for you to hang out with us. Also, look for Sharon at Sea Cruise Crew on Facebook. Join our cruise crew, hang out with us, and check us out every Monday night on the live show. Come chat with us, say hi, and hit us up with all your cruise questions. I really appreciate you watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And from myself, Sharon, and Matthew, happy cruising.